Okay, brothers and sisters in Christ, how I love God's Word. Because God's Word will never head you in the wrong direction. And I just have to make this other video because I love to show people that the Word of God is true. You can believe what it says because it's never failed. You can test the prophecies out. Not one of them has ever failed. Now, I want to get into this. And I'm not going to be too... Uh, too nice on this video because uh, I want to show it straight from scripture that the Jews are God's elected people regardless of what anybody tells you the reason why I'm saying this is because in Stephen Anderson because he's trying to do his very best you know but he can't so he's making himself look stupid he's making himself look like a fool which he is a fool ladies and gentlemen he is an imposter He's a charlatan, okay? He's saying that the Jews are not real. They're fake. They're just saying that they're Jews and they're not. He's saying that the Jewish people are not God's chosen people. He's like, watch out for people that believe in the pre-tribulation rapture because they'll tell you that the Jews are God's chosen people and this and this and this and that. And about 1948, God brought them back into the land. He's like, that's a bunch of lies. He's like... God did not bring the Jewish people back into the land. He's like, Satan brought the people back into the land of Israel, not God. He's like, that was a satanic movement that happened through the United Nations, through the Rockefellers, through the Rothschilds. It's not of God. He's like, they're not God's chosen people. So when you come across these people that believe in the pre-trib, that try to tell you that the Jews are God's chosen people, don't believe it. Wow. I literally had to pause the video. Like, I was literally stunned. Then I was talking to a sister that I have on uh, Facebook. She said that her blood pressure has been going up. I'm telling you, people, if I literally could have could have gone through the screen, I would have shook the soul out of them. I would have. I don't care. Like, people that are baby Christians that are just coming into Christ, and they see a guy like this, they're going to think, well, this guy must know what he's talking about. Especially, he's preaching, so he must have went to the Bible school, blah, blah, blah. I don't care what Bible school you went to. If what you're saying does not match up with the Word of God, you're not worth listening to. And my Bible says, He that comes to you preaching another gospel, let him be accursed. Stephen Anderson and Alex Jones are cursed of God. But I don't even know anything. I don't even think Alex knows anything about Scripture. He doesn't. It's just he had Stephen Anderson on his, uh, on his show talking about how many people believe in the pre-trib rapture, and yet you can't find the pre-trib rapture taught down through history in the church. Well, let me tell you something. Do your research. You can find it through Morgan Edwards, Peter Jerome, and so on and so on. Shepherd of Hermas, like in the 1300s, way before 1830 of John Darby. Anyways, this is not about this. I'm going to be making another video after this. I want to show you straight from Scripture, even though I, I did it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. I just love to show people that the Bible clearly teaches that the church will not be present on the earth. So Stephen Anderson is trying to do his very best because of his theology. He, he knows that it's wrong, but he has to add. He has to take away from Scripture to make everything go according to his theology. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Anderson. It's never been about your theology. It's never been about what you believe. It's always been what the Bible has to say. May you believe what Scripture says. May God be true and every man a liar, Romans 3, 4. That's why God's word says all men are liars. The Bible says that everybody is wrong. That's why everybody needs to come to the foot of the cross to be saved. Everybody needs Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking to you about a religion. I'm talking to you about a redeemer. Now, I want to get into this right here. Are the Jews God's chosen people? Now, let's see what scripture says. For everything that I just told you, that what Stephen Anderson said... If you guys want to hear it from his own mouth, go to uh, post-trib post moment 49. Right on there. Post-trib moment 49. It's crazy. He's a blasphemer. He's not even saved. And I wonder how people in his congregation can listen to him. That just tells me that they don't know nothing at all about their scriptures. They just rather believe a man. Just like people believe the Pope. Pope Francis is leading millions to hell. But the good news is, God is calling many people out of the Catholic Church. And many of these people that get out, wow, 
my aunt got out of the Catholic Church. I know so many people, they have realized that they've been lied to and they've been lied to big time. They've been robbing people of the money. And yet these popes, they get caught uh, accusing, uh, ch uh, abusing children, molesting, having sexual uh, intortions with them. And they found uh, baby skeletons in the closet. The, 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 the popes and the nuns having sex. You see this? They're hiding stuff from people like crazy. But I don't want to get into that. You guys can go and listen to my video that I made. The Catholic Church is of Satan. And it is. Believe me. So, let us get into Scripture. What does the Word of God say? Let us see what God has to say. So, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. What does it say? For you are a holy people to the Lord your your God. Ah, your God. So the Jew so God is so the Jews, God is their God. That's right. Man, oh man, I wonder if Steve Anderson, I wonder when he was born, man. I'm telling you, I was I was born at night, but not last night. This guy, I wonder if he has rocks for brains. I wonder if he has anything up there. I don't think he does. I think he needs to get his brain, he needs to get a, a CAT scan to see if anything's wrong with him here. So let's read this again. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to... Ah, the Lord your God has chosen! Ah, oh, it says chosen! Okay, God has chosen you to be a what? A people for who? For himself. A special treasure above all the people on the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor chose you, because you were more in number than any other people. For you were the, mo for you were the least of all peoples. But because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand. The Redeemer redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Therefore know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations, which those who love Him and keep His commandments. Now, look, come on people. Get into the Bible. Believe what is written here. God God called a pagan per like before Abraham came to know God, he was a pagan. Okay? And yet God called them on the backside of the desert. He called them to give him a land. Imagine what Abraham was thinking at this time. He was an old man, because God's like, What? Because God told him, As far as the eye can see, north, south, east, and west, as far I give to you and to your descendants for how long till you get destroyed till they take the land from you no the land that you see I give to you and to your descendants forever it is an everlasting possession so it's clear as can be and look what does it say in uh, right here chapter 12 now the Lord said to Abram now you better know him as Abraham because he got his name changed after Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. Do you hear that, John Kerry? Do you hear that, President Obama? You trying to take the land from Israel? You're releasing the curse upon yourself. And I already believe that the United States of America is under the judgment of God. And I literally, like I mean, I literally believe that Reverend Billy Graham's message was the last warning to the American people. And this is it now. This is it now. Okay? So it says, I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So, and it's all through the scriptures, ladies and gentlemen. God said that he would, uh, you know, he made an everlasting covenant. 
like it's so clear like let's look let, let's just look through the scriptures okay now let's go to the book let's see where I go because all through scriptures ladies and gentlemen this guy Steven Anderson is a thief he's a distortioner he's a liar unless he comes to know Jesus Christ he's going to hell he's going to hell so if you're attending his church run flee from it because look at this right in the scriptures man like right in the scriptures saying that Satan gave him the land is he stupid is he really that doll up in the head man Satan does not like the Jew why do you think the Jew has been hated? For real. Why do you think the Jews have been hated? Throughout the years. Anti-Semitism that destroyed them. Total annihilation of the Jew. Because Satan knows that God made his promises to what? The Jews. Because many people take this verse out of its context. If my people humble themselves and confess their sin, then I, the Lord, will heal them. Or restore them to their land or whatever. That's not talking about anybody that verse is clearly talking about the Jews. <clears throat> okay? Like God said, if they disobey me, God foretold the whole entire history of the Jewish people. Let's go back to Deuteronomy. I want to show you that. God clearly stated, right here, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. What does it say? Then the Lord will scatter you among all people. Do I need to interpret that? I don't think so. Then the Lord will scatter you among all peoples, from one end of the earth to the other, and there you shall serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, wood and stone, and among those nations you shall find no rest, nor shall the sole of your, your foot have a resting place, but there the Lord will give you a trembling heart, failing eyes, and anguish of soul. Your life shall hang in doubt before you. You shall fear day and night and have no assurance of life. In the morning you shall say, Oh, that it were evening, and at evening that it shall say, Oh, that it... Okay, that... Okay, where is it? Assurance of life. Which terrifies your heart and because of the sight which your eye sees. The Lord will take you back to Egypt in ships by the way of which I said to you you shall never see it again and there you shall be offered for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves but no one will buy you there are the words of the covenant which the children of Israel in the day like it, it's so clear man like literally guys they disobeyed God he cast them to the four corners of the earth let me show you I can show you another verse like it's all through scripture and I want to get into this right here right here in the book of Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah oh yeah want to see how stupid this guy is I don't care I really do not care people okay I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna show you but before I get to that I want to read this in Jeremiah I think it's Jeremiah 16 13 let me see here Jeremiah 16 verse 13 But he says, therefore I will cast you out of this land, talking about Israel, okay? Therefore I will cast you out of this land into a land that you do not know, neither you nor your fathers, and there you shall serve other gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. Wow. Wow. That's history, man. Well, duh. If you read your Bible, prophecy is history written down in advance. And what's it go? It goes on to 14. Therefore, behold the date. Now he's bringing them back. He's bringing them back into the land. Therefore, behold the days are coming, says, says the Lord, that it shall no more be said the Lord who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt but the Lord lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, which is Russia, and from all the lands where he had driven them. For I will bring them back into their land, which I gave to their fathers. Wow. 1948 this happened. But this is what I want to get into right now. 
Like, like it's even right, right here, man. Like, how more clear can you get it? Seriously, how more clear can you get it, people? Jeremiah chapter twenty-three. Jeremiah chapter twenty-three. Like, I don't understand, people, man. I really do not understand. Like, it says it right there. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will rise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and exalt judgment and righteousness in the earth. Look at that. That's talking about the second coming right here in the book of Jeremiah. In his days, Judea will be saved. Ah, at the end of the battle of Armageddon, he's going to save Israel. Hmm, significant, isn't it? And Israel will dwell safely. Now, this is his name by which he will be called. The Lord our righteousness. Therefore, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives, who brought up and led the descendants of the house of Israel from the north country and from all countries where I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Wow. You know why it always says the north and then all countries? Because there was a time when Russia w was refusing not to, to let the Jews go back to their own land. But when God says something, it's going to happen. And yet, that's exactly what happened. May 14th, 1948. But I want to get into this. This guy, Steve Anderson, he's so stupid. He's so dull in the head. And I don't care. Because he's a false prophet. He's a false teacher. And I don't give him any respect. Especially what he's doing to the Word of God that I love so much. I'm not going to be giving anybody respect who goes against my, who goes against the Word of God, against Jesus that I love so much. He says in Jeremiah chapter 30, it says the day of it says the day of trouble. It says uh, for that's the time of Jacob's trouble. It doesn't mention anything about the end times there. It doesn't mention anything about anything that's happening in the last days. Really, let's read it and find out and see if this guy's really a liar. Let's see what it says. I'm going to start from verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 30. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaks the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write in a book for yourself all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back from captivity my people Israel and Judea says the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I have given to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judea. Wow. Wow. This guy is a phony. He's a liar. That's talking about May 14, 1948. The Jews coming back into the land, and they shall possess it. Man, oh man, people, please study the Word of God. Study it, man. Like Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 17. What's it say? Let's see what it says. Therefore, says, thus says the Lord God, I will gather you from the peoples, assemble you from the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. Not Palestine, Israel. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? There's no such thing as a Palestinian state that was created by a pedophile uh, Caesar or something. There's all a lie based on... It's all, a, it's all things based upon lies. That's all that it is. It's all satanic. It's all prophecy coming to pass. God promised the land. Because you can study history. They wanted nothing to do with it until they saw the Jews coming back. They saw the Jews prospering. Everything that they do, they prosper, and they're a blessing, as the Word of God said they would be. And now everybody's jealous of them, so they want to kill them. It's all satanic. And look at this here. Let us go on. Remember Steve Anderson said it was a satanic thing? Every time in the Bible it says, God, God, God. And you would think that they, that was the end of them after what Hitler did to them. But God said, I'm going to reserve you as my people, and I'm going to see to it I'm going to watch over history and see that my words are fulfilled exactly as I said. Okay? Now look at this. Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 24. What does it say? For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into 
your own land. Wow. Your own land. Hmm. Isn't this significant? Now this is amazing here too. In Ezekiel chapter 39. It's like as if it already happened. Remember, Ezekiel was written before uh, Jesus came. But God's describing it like as if it already happened. Because look. Right here. Prepare yourself and be ready. You and all your companions that are gathered about you. And be a guard for them. After many days you'll be visited in the latter days. You will come into the land of those brought back from the sword. And gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations with an S. Nation. And now all of them dwell safely. Wow. That's literally amazing. And in verse 39. It's at the very, very last part. I think 29. Yeah, listen to this. Then they shall know that I am the Lord their God who sent them into captivity. So the Jews are going to know that God's the one that sent them into captivity among the nations, but also brought them back to their land and, and what? Yeah, and left none of them captive any longer. Like, I can go on, people. Like, come on, man. Can't you see that Stephen Anderson is a liar? Like, look at, look at Hosea. Even in the book of Hosea, it talks about it. Hosea chapter 9, verse 17 says that they would be scattered. My God will cast them away because they did not obey him and they shall be wanderers among the nations. Now let us go to the book of Amos. The book of Amos says it clearly that God would scatter them but also that he would bring them back. Amos chapter 9 verse 9. What's it say? Let me see. For surely I will command and will shift the house of Israel among all nations. All nations means all nations. And what's verse 14 say? I'll bring back the captives of my people Israel. They shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant villages and drink wine from them. They shall also make gardens and eat fruit from them. I will plant them in their land. And no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. This is the word of God, people. Like, I can go on even in, uh, in the book of Zechariah. I think it's in chapter 2 somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Where God says it clearly that Israel is the apple of his eye. Right here, verse 8. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he... Who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will, I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughters of Zion, for behold, I am coming, and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and they shall become my people, and I will dwell in your midst, then you will know that I am the Lord, that, that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And look at this here. And the Lord will take possession of Judea as he inherits in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. And there's another scripture that says, Israel, my glory. You see that? Israel, my glory. And yet, Steve Anderson says they're of Satan. He has judgment on them. The wrath of God is upon Stephen Anderson and anybody that goes against the Jews. Well, you already have the wrath upon you if you're not saved. So anyways, I can go on and on and on with Scripture. I can be here till tomorrow morning, folks. But I showed you straight from Scripture that the Bible is clear. God said that he, would, 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 he actually predicted their whole entire history. Like, I'll show you one more. Before we go. Okay, where is it? Uh, four, I think it's four. Deuteronomy chapter four, maybe. Let me see if it's verse 21. Is it 21? Or God is it? No, it's not there. Yeah, 26. 
Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 26. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you will soon early perish from the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. You will not plunder your days in it, but will be utterly destroyed. And the Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations, where the Lord will drive you. It's clear, people. It's amazing. God has not, pre he, only, he predicted the history of the Jews. They'd be scattered, they'd be brought back, and everything. Like, if you read the book of Zechariah, that day I'll make Jerusalem a burden and stone. It's happening right now. They're fighting over the land to divide it, to make a Palestinian state. All these things are all leading up to the battle of Armageddon. And yet, that's exactly what scripture said. So this is all i got to say. This is it, people. Just be ready, because Jesus is coming. I'm sorry that I had to talk like that, but I don't give any bones to what I say. I will stand up, and I will defend this word. I will stand up for the word of God. I don't let anybody talk the way they talk about it, and say things that I know that are lies from Satan himself, saying that Satan brought the Jews back. Yeah, right. Satan wants to annihilate every Jew. Think about it. If Satan can destroy Israel and Jerusalem, then Jesus cannot fulfill the promises that he made to his Jewish people. He'd be a liar. And that means God cannot judge the father of liars. But yeah, God's not going to let that happen because he made an everlasting promise. And even uh, the angel Gabriel said to Mary, Your son shall be great, and he shall rule over the house of Jacob forever. Now how long is forever? Forever is forever. And Jacob's name was changed to uh, Israel. You can read that in Second Kings chapter 17, verse 34. And it goes on and on and on and on. Though. Anyways, I'm signing off. And uh, this is all i got to say, people. Please study the scriptures and learn from the Bible. Because this is God's word and it's nothing but God's word. Don't believe man. Believe the word of God. Get yourself educated. Study prophecy. Get to learn what the Bible really teaches. So that when you come across a false teacher like Steve Anderson or Alex Jones, you'll be able to identify them right away. And this is all i got to say, so I'm letting you guys go from here, and God bless you all.